It's pretty easy to create a good workflow for your Zettel casting once you know how. Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So in this video, I'm going to take you inside my current workflow for the Zettel casting method. To do it, I'm going to use one of the most popular apps for the Zettel casting method. It's called Obsidian. Now I have another video on the channel where I profile Obsidian in detail. The principles in this video apply to any tool that you're going to use for your Zettel casting. Hope you enjoy this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you've got questions about the Zettel casting method, please do ask me in the comments section below. And I'll also add some additional resources in the notes below this video for you to go and check out. The first step in my workflow for building a Zettel casting involves creating a central repository for all of my notes. Basically, I just let Obsidian do this. It's simply a file or folder on my computer that's synced across all of my devices. So to show you what I mean, here are the thousands of notes on the left hand sidebar. And if I right click on any of these notes and click on reveal in finder, so the workflow is pretty similar for Windows, it'll pop up a finder window and I can see all of these thousands of markdown notes, which are also on an iCloud uh, folder. So they're synced across all of my devices, iPad, iPhone, uh, and so on. Now I also do use the Zettelkasten and Sync uh, as well, but you don't necessarily need to use this, but it just means that I can access my notes quickly and easily, but iCloud or Dropbox is just fine. Now I did make one slight tweak. So I created a folder inside of the Zettelkasten and Roof folder called Attachments. And in this particular folder, I've actually started adding images. Uh, and this is because I wanted to have my folder a little bit cleaner and have the images separate from the markdown notes so I can, you know, scan them. Uh, at a glance. Now you'll see I've also created a couple of other folders here. So Readwise uh, is related to the Readwise plugin, which I'll show you in a few moments. I created a folder for reviews for 2023. So once a week, I do a weekly review and I'm gonna put the uh, weekly reviews in here rather than within my Zettelkasten root folder. But this is just simply for me to navigate these more easily. Uh, and then I also have a folder for templates. So I have various templates for writing articles. Um, and for writing blog posts and YouTube videos like this one. Uh, and basically I store the templates here rather than inside of the Zettelkasten so I can find them and tweak them a little bit easier. Um, so you can change your folder structure any way you want. You know, you can just add a new folder here or you can do it inside of Finder or File Explorer. But basically I haven't made too many changes. The key takeaway here is that I'm just allowing uh, iCloud and Obsidian just to sync all of my notes across all of my devices and then I can open them up with any Markdown app. Next up, I'll cover the plugins that I've installed from, for Obsidian. Suffice to say, there are dozens and dozens of different plugins you can install. To be honest, it's a bit like WordPress. I've been a WordPress user for years and some plugins are helpful. Some you think they're helpful and then you just find yourself uninstalling them and some of them break over time. So I try not to rely too much on plugins. That said, here are the plugins that I currently uh, use, which help me with my Zettelkasten. Um, so to install plugins, uh, simply open up the uh, settings section in Obsidian, go to community plugins, and then you're going to make sure this is enabled and then click browse. Now you can search for any type of plugin and you can read all about them on the Obsidian website. The first plugin that I installed is called Outliner. This basically supercharges my ability to create outlines inside of Obsidian. It makes it work a little bit like Workflowy or Dynalist, which are profiled elsewhere on the channel. Here is an example of how Outliner works. So item one, item two, item three. And then using a the keyboard shortcut, I can uh, move these items up and down and indent them and so on. Um, but it's the up and down feature with keyboard shortcuts uh, that this plugin adds. And this saves a bit of time when planning articles and videos. The next plugin that I use is the Periodic Notes. So this basically creates a daily, weekly, or monthly note. And I find this is useful for a review process. So just let me show you how that works. So I'll close out of this. And then if I click on this calendar icon here, I can click on Open Today. It gives it a timestamp, and then I can just add notes about whatever I'm working on today. Um, and you can customize this plugin to have a similar option for your weekly or monthly note. So I also have a version of this for a weekly note uh, as well. The next plugin I have is paste URL into selection. So basically the way this works is uh, I can take any line of text and just paste the URL in. So sample text and here's the URL. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard and I can highlight this and just press command V or control V and it'll automatically hyperlink it. So it saves a little bit of time 
uh, for writing articles inside of Obsidian. The next community plugin is settings search. So this basically enables me to set all, search all of the different settings uh, in Obsidian. And hopefully this is a feature that they'll roll out as part of the core app. So if I just type in search settings and type in community plugins, you can see it automatically appears. Or if I type in uh, outliner or whatever the feature is, it automatically appears in the search results. The final plugin that I use is called janitor. This basically enables uh, me to keep my Zettel casting clean. So when I start up Obsidian, it quickly scans my vault for orphans and lets, lets me know about them and for empty files and then it moves the empty files to the trash. Now there are lots more plugins that other Obsidian users enjoy and Zettel casting fans like, um, but these are the ones that I currently get the most value from. A key part of the Zettel casting method is taking notes from books that you read, articles and so on. To do that, I use a service called Readwise. Basically it takes articles that I've read with Pocket or Instapaper, and it also takes my Kindle highlights. And because I've connected it to my Obsidian Vault, the notes automatically appear inside of Obsidian. So it only takes a moment to connect and sync. So you can quickly go to uh, Export Highlights, and you just configure it to uh, connect to Obsidian. Um, I have noticed that occasionally uh, the sync uh, will break, so do check that from time to time. Back in Obsidian, once you've configured it, it will automatically add a folder called Readwise, and it will have your articles from Pocket or, or, or Instapaper, uh, and it will have the metadata, the author, your highlights, and the original URL. So then you can reference these articles, or you can pull out your quotes and extracts from them. Similarly, it'll bring in your Kindle extracts. So I'm currently training for a triathlon, so I read a book about the triathlete's training Bible, and it's pulled in my highlights from this particular article, and all of these location links will take me to the relevant location on the book uh, on Kindle. Now the caveat is that you have to be using a Kindle to get value from this and you really do have to use a service like Pocket or Instapaper to pull in your articles. But you could just do it manually and I'll talk about that in a moment. So because I've connected Readwise to Obsidian, it makes it easy for me to reference articles when creating outlines and add my sources. So let's say I wanted to write an article about viral YouTube creators or I was just researching the topic. So I create, could create a new node inside of my Zettel Kasten and then I can press the square bracket twice, and then I'm going to search for an article I read about Jack Septic Guy, who's uh, one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. He's actually from Ireland. Uh, and then if I click on this, it automatically adds the link. So I could start adding more notes related to YouTube. So here's a note about YouTube titles. Here's a note about YouTube hooks. And I could keep going, adding all of the relevant notes related to YouTube, and then review them one by one, or move them around. Um, but this particular note is actually from an article, whereas these are my own atomic notes. So if I click on this, you can see it has the headline for the article, it has the metadata, and it has some of the highlights uh, that I've pulled out from this particular article. So this could be a good way for me to find references uh, for my article that I'm going to write, or perhaps for a video that I'm going to record, or just simply to ex expand my atomic note or thinking on this particular topic. On taking notes for your Zettel Kasten, a lot of new users of this method worry that they don't have the right headings, or they don't have the right ideas inside of their notes. This is something I worried about too. And my takeaway is that the Zettel casting is something that naturally evolves. Sometimes you will have short form atomic notes like this that don't really have much context or information. But the idea is that when this note surfaces as part of your research and your writing, you start to add those contextual internal links uh, and you start to add those uh, hashtags uh, and so on. So you're constantly going back and reviewing and updating your notes. So in other words, you can have a short form note like this, and that could then turn into something that's a bit more evolved like this. But ideally, a good note inside of your Zettel Kasten will have a descriptive heading that you can understand at a glance. Uh, so for example, when you're going through the sidebar here, it's clear at a glance what some of these notes are about. It will have a brief summary uh, at the top of the note. Then it will have you know, some thoughts from you or a reaction if it's a quote or an idea then you will link to the original source and you'll have a hashtag as well, so it's easy to find your notes. Now, there are other options whereby you can use a numbering system or dates, but I find this works best if you're going to use a digital Zettel Kasten. So I'll show you a couple more of my notes so you can see this in context. This one here is all about how to use Apple Notes with the Zettel Kasten method. I may record a video about that at some future point. This note is about long-form generative art. So I've described what long-form generative art is talked about the difference between short form and long form. I've sourced a quote from an artist working in the space. 
I've linked to another note and I've also linked to my source. So this will be enough for me to start creating an outline for an article on this particular topic. Uh, so let me show you another example. Here's a brief note I took about OpenAI. Um, I've said to myself I should create a video uh, about OpenAI. I have some sample headlines for the video, so these are not very well thought out. So this is a, you know, more of an atomic note. And then I have a link to a couple of resources and a forum uh, post on the topic. So there's not enough here for me to do anything with just yet. But if this surfaced as part of my writing or research, then I might go back and build out this note. Here's another Zettelkasten note. Keep it as a project. So this is a prescriptive heading. Uh, and it's an idea that I came across in an article by uh, Paul Graham. And he describes how new business owners should keep whatever they're working on as a project before turning it into a business for a variety of reasons. Uh, so I've pulled out some interesting quotes from this article. And this was actually surfaced via Reed Wise, and I broke this into an atomic note. I've also linked to the source, and then I've put in some relevant hashtags. Now that we've set up and configured Obsidian, pretty easy to use for your Zettel Custom. So basically, I take notes on my iPhone, on my iPad, and also on the desktop app of Obsidian. And they all pretty much work the same. So what I'll do is during the day, if I have a daily note that I want to capture, I'll just put it in the daily note for the day by clicking on this icon. Or alternatively, I will just write in the idea that I'm currently working on. So for example, I want to record a video about how to find the best ergonomic mice. So this is an outline that I came across and I pasted this directly into Obsidian. Uh, now, to be an ideal Zettelkasten, I should ideally link to uh, other notes. So I simply just press the square bracket twice and then I can search for other notes that I have inside of my Zettelkasten. So I have an article about best keyboards for writers. So I'll, I'll go ahead and link to this one as well. And that's basically how I will build it out. Throughout the day, I will just add short notes uh, and longer notes and we'll also use the daily note too. Now I'll also put in hashtags as well. And I try to do the hashtags in, you know, related to the context that I want to use the note in question. So I have the hashtag here, YouTube. And this is because I want to record a YouTube video about how to find the best ergonomic mice. And then, you know, in a couple of days time, if I was searching for your ideas for YouTube videos, I will simply type in uh, YouTube here. And then it'll show me all of the notes that I've tagged with YouTube. Or alternatively, I can go to the right-hand sidebar, click on tags, and then I can just look for my uh, YouTube note. Uh, so I'm just gonna sort this alphabetical Z to A, so it's easy to find. And then I can also find all of my YouTube notes this way as well. And you'll also notice that uh, Obsidian will show you which tags you've used the most versus which tags you've used the least. So you can see I have lots of tags with the words books, articles, money, creativity, writing, and so on. Whereas there are some tags I've only used once or twice, and these are further down the list. So this is a great way of, you know, interrogating your Zettelkasten to see what you've been taking notes the most about. Once a week or once every other week, I'll review all of my recent notes and ask myself, should I create a master note that compiles them all in one place? So to show you an example, I was recently researching a series of articles about how people can earn a living working in the creator economy. So I had dozens of different notes on the topic and I was using the hashtag uh, money quite a lot, which is why you can see it at the top here. So I said to myself, I need to create an index note. This is a principle from Zettel Kasten that collates all of these notes. So this is basically what I came up with. And by the way, I'm using keyboard shortcuts uh, to bring up this menu. This is another reason why I like uh, Obsidian. So it's called Money Zettel. So the Zettel is basically the German word for the index note. And it has uh, lots of links to my child notes, metaphors for money, rules for managing money, money and creativity, the purpose of money, how to make it, and external resources, as well as some thoughts from me on the topic. And now if I click on any of these notes, um, you know, it has information uh, about what this particular atomic note was about, as well as the original source. And you can also see here that it has the money hashtag as well. So now if I were to write an article uh, about this particular topic, you know, what I could do is I could open up two tabs. I could uh, close this tab because I find it distracting to have too many. And then on the left hand side, I could have my money Zettel and I could click through each one of these. And on the right hand side, I could have my article about earning a living in the creator economy. So basically, it's a, a good way for me to reference all of my different notes while I'm writing an article or planning it. But of course, a key principle of the Zettel casting is that you're not starting from scratch at any one time. In fact, rather than starting a blank note, what I would recommend you do is uh, 
go into one of your atomic notes and just start writing this up as an article instead. Um, and if you add a little bit to each atomic note, then over time they will naturally evolve into articles and potentially even book chapters. So on the right hand side, you can see a sample article that I wrote following this exact workflow. It's about the types of generative art that those interested in the space should know about. So it's written with Markdown so I can publish this anywhere online. This is the headline, this is the synopsis, and then this is the body of the article. Now by pressing Command E, uh, I can preview what the final version will look like. And then by pressing Command E again, I can go back in and edit it. Uh, on the left hand side, I have one of the atomic notes that I ultimately formed ideas for this article. Um, this, it's useful to show this because I can show you how some of the plugins helped me write the article. So for example, uh, I have three bullet points here and I can move these around by pressing uh, sh Command, Shift, Up and Down. Uh, it's a similar keyboard shortcut for Windows, but you can change those at any time. So sometimes I will create a long bullet point outline of an article and then do this on the left hand side and then write the article on the right hand side tab. Now I am working on a large monitor. Um, so if you're working on a laptop, you might need to change your workflow uh, slightly. So once I've gone through all of my atomic notes on a topic, then I'll finish writing the article inside of Obsidian. And then I have a couple of different ways that I can take it from Obsidian and publish it. So I could just copy the uh, final formatted version and just paste this into Substack or WordPress or whatever the tool in question is. Alternatively, I can take the Markdown and paste that in and a lot of online publishing tools today recognize Markdown, for example, Medium. Um, another option is I can click on the ellipsis here and click export to PDF. Or if you like to give it a final edit with a different writing app, and I sometimes do this, you can uh, open it up with that Markdown writing app. So I've set up a keyboard shortcut to do just that. And it will automatically open this article up inside of Ulysses. This is my favorite Markdown editor. I have another video on the channel where I profile why. And then I will just check for any last minute errors and issues. Maybe add a couple of different sections or, or fix any omissions. And because this is just a Markdown file, it, the changes are reflected back in Obsidian. And then when I'm done, I can convert this to docx, PDF, HTML, text, uh, and so on. Um, but that's probably an advanced workflow. I mean, it's perfectly fine to take it directly from Obsidian and then tidy it up inside of your uh, CMS. And of course, these are just basically all Markdown files. So at any point, you can just simply click on the ellipsis and then you can click on Reveal and Finder, similar workflow for Windows, and you can just access the file that way either. And that's probably the beauty of Obsidian. You know, it's your notes are not locked inside to inside of one proprietary tool or system like Evernote or whatever the system is. They're just a series of Markdown files that Obsidian sits on top of, and then you can just use another app to open them or another app to publish them if you want. Now there is another way to visualize your work. It's called the knowledge graph. Uh, don't use the knowledge graph as much as I thought I would. I guess I'm more of a thinker with the written word rather than a visual thinker. But basically if I zoom out, uh, it shows all three or 4,000 notes inside of my Zettelkasten and how they link to each other. So I'm just gonna pick one uh, at random. So here is a Zettel about the Zettelkasten method. I know it's all very meta. Uh, so if I click on this, or highlight this, you can see all of the notes or atomic notes that this links to. And then I can double click on any one of these and it'll immediately take me inside of it. Uh, and then I can see all of the notes inside of this particular Zettel and I can go back at any time. So this is a great way of seeing the natural connections that are forming between your notes. Um, you don't need to worry too much about it. You know, it naturally evolves as you start taking short atomic notes, longer notes, and then even putting your articles into the Zettelkasten. I also use Obsidian for my weekly review process. I do this every Friday where I review what worked and didn't work during a given week. And I have a template for this. So I just create a new note on Fridays. Then I select the template icon, search for a weekly review, and it will automatically paste in the weekly review template. So this particular template automatically gives a, a date that the note was created and adds some tags. It has the same subheadings for reflections, for projects I worked on, what worked, what didn't work, what I should fix, what I should stop, start and continue to do and my focus areas for next week, as well as my key focus areas for each day. Now it looks like a lot, but because that's a template, it only takes me about 15 minutes to populate this, maybe 20 minutes on a given Friday. And I find it's quite good for reviewing what worked and also for planning the subsequent week. Now here is a weekly review note that I completed on September the 23rd. 
It's with a slightly older template, but it's just to show you the principle in action. So it has the date at the top. It has a list of uh, bullet points related to what worked on a given week. Um, so I wrote some articles. I had a call with a business coach. Uh, and then I also recorded some videos. And I, I just use bullet points for these. You know, I try not to spend too long on this. It doesn't need to be an essay. And I can move these around with the Outliner plugin. I described some things that worked. So I had good success with dictations on this given week. And I also described things that didn't work. Uh, so I had some technical issues with ScreenFlow. Um, I also recorded a video that didn't get any traction. Uh, and then I also, my scheduling was off in this given week and then I had calls at the wrong time during the week. I picked my three focus areas for the following week. So videos, writing, and learning a new recording tool. And then I mapped out a couple of things that I wanted to do uh, on the preceding week as well. And then I keep all of these reviews uh, inside of the review folder inside of Obsidian. Now, I guess this isn't really a key part of the Zettelkasten, but because my notes are in the Zettelkasten, it makes sense for me to do my weekly review here too. That covers my overview of my current workflow for the Zettelkasten method. As you can see, it's something that's iterative. It evolves and changes over time. But the key principles basically are to take short notes, to take long notes and add and rewrite them over time. Interlink your notes and always ask yourself, how can you take what you've learned and read and turn it into something that you're going to write about and then publish online. Do you've got questions about the Zettelkasten method or my workflow? Please ask me in the comment section below this video. And if you'd like to get more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the Become a Writer Today channel.